I printed this on what's supposed to be a budget multicolor 3D printer. No failures, no color bleed, actually good quality. There's just one problem with calling it budget. I own machines that cost three or more times as much as this machine. And when Flashforge sent me their budget multicolor 3D printer, I was ready to accept some compromises if the price actually made it budget level. In the next eight minutes, I'll show you what this printer can actually do. The good, the annoying, and the price that just makes no sense. Stick around for that price check at the end, because that's where the budget claim completely falls apart. Flashforge sent me the AD5X 3D printer to test. Full disclosure, this is a sponsored unit, but they're not paying me for this video and they haven't seen what I'm about to say. The contents of this video are solely my own opinions. Assembly took about 20 minutes, nothing complicated. Mount the screen, attach the four spool filament system, connect the Bowden tubes in, pretty standard stuff. Here's where it gets a little annoying. You need two pieces of software, the Orca Flashforge slicer on your computer and a separate mobile app, just so your desktop can talk to the printer. Why? I have no idea. The calibration is automatic, which is nice and expected, but this touchscreen, resistive technology from like 2015. It's unresponsive, it catches glare easily, and if you have larger fingers, well, good luck. Loading filament does have one clever feature. It auto feeds when it detects the spool, but it's painfully slow. And then you have to manually assign the material type and color on this finicky touch screen for every single spool. Before we continue, a quick pause to introduce today's sponsor, PCBWay. They are the masters of fabrication. Whether you need CNC machining, sheet metal, 3D printing in multiple materials, and even custom electronic boards, basically, if you can design it, they can make it for you. Let me give you an example of how to use the PCBWay quoting system. Here I have a 3D model I generated from an image to 3D model AI tool. I can download this model as an SDL and then head over to the PCBWay website. Here's how simple the process is. In the top menu, find the service that you're looking for, in my case, 3D printing. Then upload your file. And once that's uploaded, just go through all the options selecting your material and finishing types. Answer any additional questions, find the best product description, and then submit your request. The team at PCBWay will quote your order as soon as they can. Check out PCBWay today, link in the description for your special offer. Anyway, I ran a test print that came preloaded on the machine. It printed fine. One thing I noticed, the filament only retracts a few inches from the hot end during color changes. So I assumed swaps would be really fast. I timed this later and spoiler, well, I was wrong. All right, let's test this thing for real. I'm printing this articulated water dragon model. Four colors, lots of details. This is where budget printers usually fall apart. And here's where I started getting frustrated. The slicer shows the printer and the loaded filaments, but it's not like other slicers I'm familiar with that automatically sync this process. You have to manually add each filament, set the material type, set the color, and sometimes manually paint parts because the auto assignment screws up the model colors. Then you send it to print and the Intelligent Filament System, or IFS, appears. You know what makes it intelligent? You assign the physical spool to the color you set in the slicer. That's it, that's the intelligence. But fine, it works. Print starts, first layer looks clean. Remember when I said filament changes should be fast because of the short retraction distance? Want to guess how long it takes? Yeah, one minute, 15 seconds per swap. I think it's because the spool rewinding is really slow, but that's probably by design. Speed it up and you'd likely get tangled spools. So this probably can't be improved. This print ran for about eight hours. No failures, no layer shifts. I did have to keep an eye on the backboard. It was getting blocked a couple of times by the purge waste, but that's nothing new. And here's the results. Some stringing, fine. I cleaned that up with a little torch lighter, but the color transitions, clean, no bleed. The joints articulate smoothly. Surface detail is sharp. This is actually a good print. I wasn't expecting that. So the machine can print, but there's something about this workflow that really bothers me. All this purge waste, and I have no idea how much 
this filament actually represents. Look at this, same model in Bamboo Studio, nine hours, 25 minutes. And it tells me exactly how much filament it's purging. Flash Forge Slicer, seven hours and 56 minutes, which is actually faster, great. But there's no purge calculation anywhere. The column is just completely missing. I searched online to figure out why. Turns out the purging on this machine is controlled by the printer firmware, not the slicer. So the slicer can't calculate the waste, which means you don't know how much filament you're wasting through purge, and you don't know the true cost of your print or how much material you're actually using. For someone who's trying to run a side hustle or manage material costs, this could be a real deal breaker. I wanted to test consistency, so I swapped to some bamboo spools which fit fine and printed a plate of articulated sloths. Again, changing spools wasn't intuitive. There are two icons, neither labeled clearly. I had to guess which one retracts just by the icon. It heated up, slowly unwound the filament, almost to the drop point. And you have to be careful because if it falls off, your spool might unravel. So you load the new spool, wait for it to feed in very slowly, manually set the type and the color again and repeat this for every spool you're changing. And here's another kicker. I loaded bamboo filament, went to add it in the slicer and the only options are Flash Forge, Generic or Custom. Where's Polymaker, Esun, any of the major brands. I get not listing a direct competitor, but leaving out everyone and making users have to do it manually, it's just annoying. The slots printed fine. Good detail, clean colors, could have been even better with variable layer height, but I didn't bother going that far. So where do I actually stand on this machine? The screen is frustrating. The build quality feels a bit cheap. The slicer is a bare bones copy of Orca that's missing critical features like purge waste calculations. Or am I missing something here? I don't know. But the print results, are good. I didn't get a single print failure. It printed fast. The quality is completely usable. So is it worth it? That's the question with any budget gear. You pay less, deal with the annoyances, but still get the results you're happy with. That trade-off makes sense if the price justifies it. The AD5X is $399 US dollars when it's on sale, like it is currently. And it's down from its recommended retail price of 549 US dollars. The Bamboo Lab A1 Combo, also currently 399 as it's on sale, down from 559 USD. Same sale price, nearly identical full price. Even when neither is on sale, they're competing in the exact same tier, except the A1 has a bigger build plate, better software, built-in model marketplace, great phone app, a filament system that actually syncs with the slicer, just better in every measurable way. The AD5X markets itself as a budget option for multicolor printing, but the 399 USD is not competing against other budget printers. It's competing directly against the A1, and that's a fight it can't win. If this thing was 299, maybe even 349, we'll be having a different conversation. At that price, I could forgive the software frustrations and the finicky screen, but at $399 US dollars when it's on sale, currently the same price as the Bamboo Lab A1 when it's on sale, well, I don't know. It prints well, it just doesn't know what it is, and neither do I. I do want to thank Flashforge for sending me this unit, and I hate being this critical of something that actually does work well, but I have to be honest. So if you have found value in this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and thanks for watching.